Last week, we began a new uh, locus or topic in our survey of Christian doctrine, namely the doctrine of man. And we differentiated uh, empirical, philosophical, and theological approaches to anthropology. And today we want to turn to our first topic in theological anthropology, which is man as created in the image of God. Let's uh, look first at the biblical data concerning man as the image of God. The classical theological uh, term for this in Latin is the imago dei. The image of God. Man is created in God's image, the imago dei. Let's look at the biblical data that's pertinent to the doctrine of man as the image of God. The classical uh, biblical text on this subject is Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 to 27. Genesis 1, 26 to 27. There we read, Then God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God he created him, male and female he created them. Now notice here that there are two words used to express the resemblance of man to his creator. The first word uh, is the Hebrew word tselem, or image, which connotes um, a, a resemblance or a literal image of something. The second word is demut, which is translated likeness. Selim and demut, image and likeness. Man is said to be created in God's image after or according to his likeness. Now, in Hebrew, or at least in this Hebrew text, there's probably no difference between these two. It's not as though these represent two different aspects of man's nature, image and likeness. It's rather a sort of parallelism to describe the resemblance or relation of man to God. The image of God uh, is also referred to in Genesis chapter 5 and verse 1. Genesis chapter 5, verse 1, where it says, this is the book of the generations of Adam. When God created man, he made him in the likeness, demut, of God. And finally, Genesis 9, 6 is uh, God's command concerning capital punishment for murder. Genesis 9 and verse 6 reads, Whoever sheds the blood of man by man shall his blood be shed. For God made man in his own image. Selim. These are the passages in uh, Genesis that describe man as made in the image and likeness of God. But we might also want to compare with these texts Genesis chapter 5 and verse 3. Genesis 5, 3. This verse speaks of Adam's begetting his son Seth. Genesis 5, 3 says that Adam, and I quote, became the father of a son in his own likeness after his image and named him Seth. Here, the offspring of Adam is also said to be created in Adam's image, Selim, 
uh, and also his likeness, demut, in the same way that Adam was created in the image and according to the likeness of God. So just as Adam was created in the image and after the likeness of God, so um, Adam's offspring um, were created in his, um, Adam's image and likeness. Now, Genesis uh, is certainly the locus classicus for the doctrine of the image of God in Scripture. But there are also a couple of passages in the New Testament that speak of this concept as well. For example, 1 Corinthians 11 and verse 7. 1 Corinthians 11 and verse 7. Here, Paul says, for a man ought not to cover his head, since he is the image, and the Greek word here is icon, he is the image, icon, of God. But woman is the glory of man. Man is the image, icon, uh, and glory of God, but woman is the glory of man. So here we have a reference in the New Testament to man as created in God's image. Now notice the asymmetry here. Paul does not say that woman is the image and glory of man. Paul knows that according to Genesis, woman is created in the image of God, just as much as man is. When you go back to Genesis and look at the Locus Classicus for this notion, namely Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 and 27, it uses the plural pronoun, them. Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, let them, plural, let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, etc. Then verse 27 says, so God created man in his own image, in the image of God he created him, male and female he created them. Clearly, in Hebrew thinking, man and woman alike are created in God's image. So, mankind is created in the image of God, and mankind comprises both male and and female. They are equally in the image of God. Uh, and that's why Paul says woman is the glory of man. He doesn't say she is the image of man. The woman is the glory of man, but he understands that she is just as much um, in the image of God as her husband is. Finally, uh, in James 3 and verse 9, Speaking about uh, controlling our tongue, James says the following, James chapter 3 and verse 9, with it, the tongue, we bless the Lord and Father, and with it we curse men who are made in the likeness of God. The word in the Greek here for likeness is homoiosis. Homoiosis. So in both the Old Testament and the New Testament, we have this notion of human beings as being special, uh, singled out in being created in God's image and likeness, unlike all of the rest of the creatures in the biosphere. Now this is the biblical data that is pertinent to the doctrine of the image of God. Man is created in God's image. Um, Christ is God's image as well, as we'll see. And then man in Christ uh, is being brought into conformity with the image of Christ, as we'll see next time. Now, as I reviewed this material, I wondered um, if there weren't some uh, aspect of it that might be pertinent to this Christmas time of the year that I could share. 
And to my surprise, uh, there was an aspect of this doctrine that did um, strike me in this way. Because the New Testament not only speaks of man as being the image and likeness of God, it also uses language which is the very reversal of this expression to say something very radical, that God himself was made to be in the image or likeness of man. Philippians chapter 2, verses 6 and 7. Philippians 2, verses 6 and 7. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself, taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men. Homoiosis. Philippians 2, 6 to 7. Though Christ was God himself, Christ humbly came to be born in the likeness of man. Similarly, in Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 17, Hebrews 4, 17, we read that since we share in flesh and blood, Christ, and I quote, had to be made like hamoyao, same root, hamoyao, had to be made like his brethren in every respect so that he might become a merciful and faithful high priest to make expiation for the sins of the people, end quote. So at this time of year, as we think about uh, man as being made in the image and likeness of God, let's not forget as well that in Christ, God was actually made in the image and likeness of man for the sake of our salvation. And that's what we celebrate at Christmas. Well, let's have a word of prayer to um, end our shortened lesson today, uh, and then we'll enjoy the fellowship around the table. Our Father in heaven, we celebrate this tremendous gift of your Son for the sake of our salvation and redemption. Thank you that in him we have the forgiveness of sins and the gift of your righteousness to us. Uh, thank you that he stooped so low to take on not only our nature but our very sin itself that we might be cleansed and forgiven and declared righteous in your eyes. And so as we think of Christmas this year and think of the incarnation, we pray that you would bring these truths um, to our hearts uh, that we might uh, celebrate with deeper meaning and understanding. Through Christ our Lord we pray. Amen.